Welcome back to our Baron Spotlight as we are joined by Justin Morneau. Uh, you know, I thought a couple of years ago that these rehabs were easy. Big league guy would come down, he'd go five for ten, he'd hit three home runs. Pitcher would come down, throw a no-hitter, and it's just like, ah, this is easy stuff. But it's far from that, man. Tell me how difficult it is and uh, how, how far it brings you back. Well, I think <clears throat> the thing you forget is how refined most of the guys are at the big league level. Or, you know, the misses are a couple inches off. Mm -hmm. There's not too many misses that are you know, a few feet away from the strike zone or whatever it is. So the comfort level in the batter's box sometimes, I think we saw the first at bat the other night, he got hit in the hand and, and uh, you know, the misses are just a little further off than, than what they are. So it's, it's a little more difficult to get locked in on the strike zone, I think. But uh, and the pitchers will tell you when they come down here, because there's so much around the plate that it seems like the guys are so aggressive as soon as they throw a strike, it gets hit. And, and you see it a lot of times, guys come down on a rehab assignment and, and give up five or six runs in three innings and, and they're trying to figure out what happened. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's just all part of it. It's part of learning and, and uh, it's part of the game. It's interesting. Some of your soon-to-be future teammates in Chicago, they've come down there and they're, they're like, wow, i got to get out of there because the weather's hot, the travel is difficult. And the competition, because that pitcher wanted to beat you the other day. He doesn't want to get hit by the uh, hard by the American League MVP from a few years ago. D did you see him react a little bit differently when you got in the box versus the rest of your teammates? I don't, I don't know if I put that much into it. I think he wants to get everybody out because he's trying to get to the next level. But, uh, you know, there's, there's times I remember when I was a young player and, and in spring training or whatever, and, and Pedro Martinez would come over because we were shared with, uh, mm -hmm. with the Red Sox in the same city. And, He'd throw on a backfield in the minor league game. One of the guys, you know, hit a home run off him, and it was the talk in the whole minor league clubhouse is that he took Pedro deep, and, and I'm sure Pedro wouldn't remember it, you know, the next day, but the, that kid, that's something he'd remember the rest of his life. I, Pedro's a Hall of Famer. I wouldn't put myself in that category or anything like that. But, you know, you, you just know how it is when you're facing big league guys, and, and there's that little, maybe some little extra that uh, you want to just see how you measure up against those guys and prove to yourself that you can get to that next level. And, and I think that's, that plays into it. All right, you're here again for a reason as we take a look. I'm sure Furka will get this, but this right here, when did that happen? Uh, it, was this over time a progression? And where is it right, uh, right now? It was an uh, injury that happened in spring training of 15 and was there all year, played with it all year. and Was hoping that rest was going to you know, it would feel better by the middle of the winter and, and uh, decided to have surgery on it in December, tore the tendon and, and uh, was, uh, was not a whole lot of fun, went through a long rehab, and, and, uh, but back now and, and uh, feels good, feels better than it did at any point last year, so that's been, that's been nice. You know, there wasn't a swing last year that I took really that wasn't, uh, wasn't painful or, or, you know, that felt good, so it's, it's something that's come along and, and I'll continue to gain confidence in it and, and test it every day and, and go through the, the exercises and the rehab to keep it strong, but uh, shouldn't have any problems with it, you know, moving forward. It's, it's seen the doctors and they think uh, the way they reinforced it and the way everything's done, it should be stronger than it was before. So hopefully that's the case and don't have to worry about it the rest of the, rest of the time that I play. Our guest here on the Baron Spotlight is Justin Morneau. All right, so your impressions of the city of Birmingham and the ballpark in general. I'm thinking it's a little different than New Britain and Rochester. <laughs> Yeah, Birmingham, I, I've actually visited here to visited UAB a few years ago. I don't know if I'll, it was a, it was a whole nother uh, millennium ago, but uh, right. this is one of the visits I took uh, for school when I was looking at, uh, to play college baseball. So I've been here before a long time ago. I don't remember much about it, but uh, you know, it's been, it's been hot. It's been nice. Uh, you know, there's some, some great things about everywhere you go, but uh, this ballpark's beautiful. You know, I, I got to, Finish out on a rehab assignment last year in, in New Britain and got to go back and, and close down that ballpark. They got a new ballpark in Hartford. So it was really interesting to go back there and see that. It's not ever quite what you remember it when you're moving up the ladder in the minor leagues. Uh, you don't really pay too much attention to how the ballpark is. Obviously, if it's bad, you really know that. But uh, when it was there, we thought it was, we thought it was great. And, and coming out of the Florida State League where we were drawing you know, a couple hundred people a night to, to play in those stadiums in double-A where there's six or seven thousand and you're playing in front of big crowds. It's a lot of fun and, and you know, it's been, uh, it's been a nice experience to come here and see this place. Hey, with all the rehabs, by the way, that you've had to have, I understand, I caught rumor is that you are picking up the spread tonight, true or false? <laughs> I think that's one of the unwritten rules right. of baseball. Right. When, when you go down to the minor leagues, we, we had, uh, well, I don't think I'll tell the guys what we had in, in, in Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. 
but uh, you know, you come to Birmingham, you have, we have to do a little, little bit of barbecue. So we're going to do that tonight and, and uh, have some ribs and all. Yeah, that this is not the Eastern League, Justin. This is this <laughs> it better be Southern dialect, all right? Driving to the ballpark every single day in '06. What was that like? It was a. Uh, it was fun. I, you know, our team, we got off to a little bit of a rough start. I think we were three games under at some point in, in June, and, and it kind of turned around all at the same time. Uh, my focus became a little bit uh, better, and, and my swing started to feel good, and the team started to play well, and, you know, we felt like we couldn't lose, and, and that's exciting when you have that feeling, not only as a player, but as a team, and, and every day you just can't wait for the game to start because you feel like you're going to win. and, and uh, the the year we had uh, we had other years we went to the playoffs had other good years but uh, that year was special just uh, it was the first time that you know I'd really had success uh, extended success at the big league level and, and uh, kind of proved to myself that I could do it and, and if I concentrated if I focused the way it needed to be focused and, and learned a lot of lessons that year learned a lot of lessons the year before I really struggled but uh, it was uh, it was just one of those years that, that was special you know anytime we see any of those guys we uh, we talk about it we have. Uh, great memories and, and when you're on winning teams it seems to be a really close group you know guys are looking out for each other there's still still guys playing from that team and, and the guys that aren't will still talk to each other quite a bit so it's it's a uh, it's one of those just special things that you can't explain it's unfortunate we didn't go further in the playoffs but uh, it was still it was still a really special year trivia for Justin Morneau who did you beat out for the MVP who was second <laughs> Well, Jeter was Jeter was second. He had a great year. Or Ortiz had a great year. I think he had 52 that year. It was, uh, it was. Uh, I think anyone could have been deserving. I think uh, we had guys on our team. Maurer had a great year. I think he had 360 something that yep. year. Uh, Michael Kadire, I feel like was was overlooked. He didn't play the whole month of uh, April basically, and, and still drove in 100 runs. I think so. It was. Uh, there's a lot of guys that uh, that had great years. I was just fortunate. Uh, that mine uh, stood out to the to the people that voted for it. I know there's a, another league. They call it the National League. Who won the National League in 06? Well, Ryan Howard won. Nice. This guy's been reading your uh, reading your bios. Huh? Well, we we do a charity event, and I, I uh, think it's pretty cool to to have the two mm -hmm. put my name on, and then get Ryan Howard to sign the other half of the ball, and then auction the ball off at the event. So try and have some unique things there. So it's uh, it's one of those things that I think I should know, and and uh, I know for other reasons too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Morneau has been our guest. I know you got a bunch of other things to do, but thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. All right, Justin Morneau, our guest here on the Barron Spotlight. You can catch this and all of our interviews all summer long. Just go to barrons.com.